All right, just before we start the video, I was in like a three hour rant before this. I've recorded this script like three different times, or this is gonna be the third time. So if my voice doesn't sound so good, that's why. Anyways, let's get into the video. Howdy there, Isaac here. Before we get into the video, I just wanna say that this video will be more of a podcast style one. Basically, there isn't much to watch, so I'd recommend listening to the audio while doing something maybe like washing dishes or something of that caliber, probably more chore-like. Anyways, on to the video. Today, we'll be turning the world of My Hero Academia a little darker. The Uchiha are a clan of immense hatred and love from the Naruto universe. Izuku in canon is already a pretty friendly person, and he isn't spiteful at all, not even to his childhood bully, Bakugo. However, in this what if, he's certainly not the Deku we know. This take on the character will be much different, since we'll be changing up the backstory a little. This video will have a light goal of 5, and then part 2 will come out. We have a lot to cover, so without further ado, Let's see what it would be like if Izuku was a Uchiha. The story starts now. Izuku's story would be the same for most of his early life, except for one change, the identity of his father. Inko, his mother, when talking to the quirk doctor, would instead say her partner had a quirk that changed his eye color. Izuku's father was very secretive and was never in his life. The man was so secretive the Inko didn't know his quirk was more than just changing his eye color. Izuku would grow up with very conflicting views of his father. How could his father never visit, never call, not even write a text or letter to his own son? Izuku resented his father, yet yearned for nothing more than to see him. Not to mention, he was still seen as quirkless and still bullied by Bakugo. Then, one day, Inko would tell Izuku that his father was going to visit, which brought up a whole slew of emotions. Izuku had no idea what he would do. Would he punch the man who put him through so much? Would he run up and hug the father he missed for so long? Would he say anything to him? Was there anything he could say? All these questions ran through Izuku's head, and even more questions popped up in the coming days. Izuku had a week to prepare for his father's arrival, and prepare he did. Izuku would practice all the lines he could in his room, even trying to practice the cold shoulder. Eventually, the day would come, the day Izuku had been waiting for his whole life. This was it, even if he was quirkless, even if he couldn't be a hero. At least he'd have a family, like everyone else. As Izuku was eating breakfast with his mother, her phone rang. She answered it happily, asking if the person was on their way to the airport. Izuku sat up, realizing that it was his father. Izuku strained his ears to listen in on the conversation, trying to hear his father's voice. Inko's smile slowly faded into a frown, her eyes getting somewhat watery. She said she understood and that it was okay. The two went on to say their goodbyes before Inko put her phone down. Izuku knew whatever news it was that it wasn't good. When Inko explained to Izuku what had happened, he didn't want to believe it. His father had to cancel a trip due to his work. Apparently, a new client had come into the picture and Izuku's father was needed to help with that. Izuku clenched his fist. Wasn't there anyone else that could handle that client? Was the client really more important than his own family? Izuku had such high hopes for finally meeting his father. Didn't his dad want to see him? Didn't he want to see what his son had done? That he was getting good grades and planning to apply to UA? The pain Izuku was feeling was deeper than any he had felt before. This betrayal by his father left a deep wound in his heart. Suddenly, the world looked different like it was in high definition, but even better than that. Izuku could see a sort of aura around Inko, and even an aura around himself. Inko began to talk, but it was like Izuku was able to predict what she would say before she even did. 
Suddenly, Inko would gasp and point towards Izuku, which he had also predicted perfectly. She would say that Izuku's eyes had turned red, just like his father's. Izuku would get up and quickly run to the restroom, looking at himself in the mirror. As he confirmed what his mother said, he would slam his hand on the counter. Of course he had inherited his father's quirk, and it had awakened right when the old man hurt him and his mom. What kind of irony was that? Despite this being MHA, like in Naruto, the Sharingan consumes a good amount of chakra. With MHA, it'd do the same. And Izuku, after having his Sharingan active for only a minute or so, would quickly get fatigued. His Sharingan would fade away, leaving his eye color normal once more. Izuku was tired, even though he had only woken up an hour or so ago, and he decided to go back to bed. This event happened two years before we see Izuku in the anime, but it left him changed even more so than he already was. For anyone who doesn't know, the Sharingan is an ocular jutsu, meaning it affects your vision and everything associated with it. The Sharingan has three stages, its primary stage with one tomo, a comma looking thing on the iris, a secondary stage with two tomo, and its evolved state with three tomo. Even with the Sharingan in its primary stage, someone like Sasuke was able to track the movements of someone who was easily faster than people like Bakugo and Todoroki. Not only that, the Sharingan increases movement speed, at least how fast you can move your hands, as well as being able to copy and read opponents' moves. It also makes you capable of casting illusions on enemies. Advanced users can cast them without looking someone in the eyes. In the two years that followed, Izuku had vowed revenge on his father, and trained to increase the amount of time his Sharingan was active. He had also evolved his Sharingan into their secondary stage, making them have two Tomo. He had also stopped trying to be friendly with people like Bakugo. One day, while training his Sharingan, Izuku had accidentally put Bakugo under a Genjutsu. Bakugo, while trying to bully Izuku, had taken the young Uchiha's backpack and was searching for his hero journal. Izuku, while lying and saying that it wasn't in there, would end up casting a Genjutsu on Bakugo, making the bombastic blonde believe that the hero journal was not there, and to his surprise, it would work. And this was the start of Izuku's Genjutsu shenanigans. Izuku would use his Sharingan to make people believe their pencils were missing or that they had left their car keys somewhere else, all harmless instances. While Izuku is technically breaking the law due to using his quirk, he didn't care. Izuku only had that his quirk changed his eye color and made him more perceptive, and he was going to leave it that way. Nobody needed to know he could cast small illusions gave him a slight edge, and his own father never specified his quirk, so neither would he. Izuku by no means was a villain, but he definitely wasn't pure of heart, and his admiration of heroes wasn't as great as in canon. Due to things being different than in the anime, and Izuku not being bullied as much, especially due to his increasing mastery of Genjutsu, the events of the sludge villain attack wouldn't happen. Izuku was aiming to be a hero, so he could make enough money to hire a private investigator to find his father. That was Izuku Midori's goal in life, to find his father, and make him feel the pain he had felt, at least through Genjutsu. Yes, this is wrong and illegal, but Izuku is a teenager who can't process that too well. And secondly, since Izuku isn't going to physically hurt his father, and only cast an illusion on him, Izuku feels that it isn't illegal in any way. I told you guys the story would be darker. Anyways, the day the entrance exam would come, the day that Izuku had been training hard for, he could now have his Sharingan active for a full six minutes without pause. However, Izuku wouldn't meet Ochako, nor would he talk to Ida. Izuku would look over to see all of his opponents. These were all people who probably had flashy or powerful quirks, like Bakugo. Izuku thought this might happen though, and he had a plan for it. The exam would start and Izuku would look to see 
who we figured was the strongest person around. Izuku would follow strong quirk users such as Aoyama and Ido. Since Izuku wasn't strong enough to take out the robots with his bare hands, he'd end up taking a large piece of metal from the wreckage of one robot in order to use it as a weapon. Now the real battle would begin. Izuku, using his Sharingan, would cast subtle genjutsu, making people believe they hit their targets when they actually missed them. This would be easier with people like Aoyama since they didn't have to physically touch their targets. Either way, Izuku would end up stealing the kills of several people in the arena. The Zero Pointer would then get released, with Ochako still getting trapped under rubble. Izuku, however, would ignore her. He had no idea who she was, and he didn't care about her that much since they didn't talk to each other like in canon. And nobody was pushing him to be a hero like in the anime either. Besides, Izuku was sure a hero would come in and save her, or someone would deactivate the robot before it crushed her. Either way, Izuku's Sharingan had drained him enough and he couldn't use him anymore to save her. The exam would end soon, and if someone like Mineta could get enough points to be in class 1A, then so could Izuku. Oh, and Ochaka wouldn't be crushed, so there's that. Izuku would eventually get the news that he passed, which would please him. He was sure he'd pass, though there was a slight bit of doubt in his mind. Izuku would spend the next few days still training his quirk and trying different ways of using Genjutsu. If Izuku could master this one aspect, he could probably trick someone into giving up information about their quirks, which would be a huge deal. He could also trick someone into thinking other things. The sky was the limit with Genjutsu. He only had to find a way to completely trick someone instead of just altering what they saw. This would help out when Bakugo found out that Izuku had passed the entrance exams. Bakugo would try to threaten Izuku only for Izuku to cast a Genjutsu, in which he beats up Bakugo. Izuku had never tried this before, since it required altering both vision and touch, and possibly even sounds, but it worked. This only pissed off Bakugo though, however, Izuku was long gone by the time the Genjutsu was over, and Bakugo was left trying to understand what just happened, and asking himself if any of it was real. The first day at UA would go just about the same as in canon, since Izuku's quirk doesn't enhance his strength much, only his reaction time. The students also wouldn't admire him since he didn't take out the zero pointer like in the anime. Izuku would do better than Mineta though, so there's that at least. Oh, and Bakugo wouldn't fly off the handle since he beat Izuku in all the tests. I know I'm going through a whole episode in only a few sentences, but there isn't much to say here. Izuku is a loner here and doesn't talk much, and the few times he does talk, it's to point out things he observes with the Sharingan. This does get him some friend points, especially from people like Ida and Ojiro who rely on their physicality and take Izuku's advice. One pretty different change is that All Might isn't meeting up or watching over Izuku. But, do you know where some real changes would happen? In the battle training that takes place in the episode, Rage You Damn Nerd. Izuku wouldn't have a specific costume. He did have time to make one, unlike in the anime, but his costume was a simple tracksuit, only this time it's a darker color. Izuku was more of a stealthy person in this what if. He didn't want to be noticed, and he didn't want to be flashy. He wanted to be more of a snake in the grass, striking when the time was right. Izuku and Ochako would be paired up like in canon. Though the two hardly knew each other, that wouldn't stop Ochako from trying to talk to him. Do they really expect us to memorize these floor plans? Asked Ochako. Izuku, who had scanned over the floor plans with his Sharingan a few times, had already memorized them. He looked over at her saying not to worry and that he had already done it. The two would sit in awkward silence. Ochako felt like Izuku gave off a cold, almost villainous vibe, but that couldn't be the case. He was someone who was going to be a hero, right? 
Oh, Chaco, if only you knew how Uchiha worked. The test would start, and the pair would go on to enter the building. Izuku was facing off against his old rival, Bakugo. The bombastic blonde had a flashy quirk and was easily angered, but was by no means stupid. And it was possible that Izuku's genjutsu wouldn't work on him forever. Bakugo, like in canon, would sneak attack Izuku and Ochako. Why is he still doing this? Simple. Bakugo had pieced together the fact that Izuku was casting some sort of illusion with his eyes. This would really piss Bakugo off. He felt like every time he was under a genjutsu, Izuku was just playing around with him, laughing at him behind his back. Bakugo's pride would never accept something like that. The difference here is that Bakugo rushes Izuku using a bunch of smaller explosions. Izuku would deactivate his Sharingan and quickly retreat with Ochako. Once a few meters away, Izuku would look back, noticing that Bakugo had filled the hall with smoke. So that was his strategy, huh? Izuku couldn't use his Sharingan if he couldn't see. That was pretty smart. Izuku would expect nothing less of Bakugo. Izuku would tell Ochako to run and that he'd meet her. The young Uchiha would turn around to face his opponent, who was simply a silhouette in the smoke. What's the matter, Deku? Afraid to come fight me? No, I think the one who's afraid to come and fight is you, Bakugo. This enraged Bakugo, who shot out of the smoke, firing small explosions in front of him to mask his eyes. Izuku read Bakugo's movements as best he could. It was almost like he was going in slow motion. Bakugo swung with a big right hook, only for Izuku to flip him. Izuku would then quickly look down towards Bakugo's eyes. However, the bombastic blonde managed to fire off an explosion just in time to make a smoke screen. Izuku retreated once more before Bakugo could recover and injure him. On to plan two, the capture plan. Izuku really wanted to beat Bakugo on his own, but that'd be difficult without Genjutsu. Izuku would deactivate his Sharingan to save time before completely running off. Bakugo, once recovering, would yell out in anger. Ah! Damn you, Deku! Come back and finish this! Izuku ignored this and hid away, thinking of a game plan. Bakugo probably wouldn't stay still enough to be captured. That was something Izuku wanted to try, but in every scenario he could think of, Bakugo would be too fast to capture. There was another plan, though. One that was sort of risky and stupid, but it could work. It'd take advantage of Bakugo's insanity. Izuku would wait, listening carefully for when Bakugo approached his location. Once he heard the blonde come near, he'd dart out, quickly looking into Bakugo's eyes with the Sharingan. Bakugo would quickly use his quirk to blast Izuku away and cause a smoke screen, but that brief instance was enough to get Bakugo. Soon, the blonde heard his partner saying that Ochako and Izuku had gone into the bomb room, and that they were too much for him. Bakugo tried to ignore it, knowing that it was a genjutsu, that he was being tricked by that damn nerd, and since the voice was so loud, he couldn't hear Izuku's footsteps. There were two possibilities that Bakugo could think of. One was that Izuku was running towards the bomb, and the other was that Izuku was going to try to capture him. Bakugo remembered the direction of the stairs and shot off one of his grenades. Even if that damn nerd tried to run, there was no way he'd be able to walk away unscathed. Unfortunately for Izuku, Bakugo was right, and the grenade exploded pretty close to the young Uchiha. As Izuku stood up and tried to recover, Bakugo would end up flying towards him and absolutely manhandle the Uchiha. <laughs> Izuku would quickly activate his Sharingan, but the small smoke screens and pure speed of Bakugo by now would be too much to keep up with. Bakugo was almost perfectly suited for fighting Izuku. The Uchiha would be flipped over and slammed into the ground. Was this it? The limit of how strong Izuku could be? He couldn't even be his childhood bully? How would he beat his father? Bakugo would put his hand on Izuku's face, blocking the Uchiha's view, 
as well as basically capturing him. Izuku was ashamed, ashamed of how weak he was. He was lost to his bully. At this point, he might as well be quirkless against Bakugo. Bakugo expected Izuku to cry, or to start saying some random BS. But instead, Izuku started laughing. His plan had worked. Izuku, in an instant, had grabbed onto Bakugo's arm and wrapped his legs around it. In a split second, Bakugo was flipped over and eating dirt. Well, concrete. Bakugo would use an explosion to try to free himself, only for Izuku to redirect the blonde's arm, and therefore the explosion. Izuku would pull Bakugo close and stare into his eyes with the Sharingan. He had won. Bakugo fell silent, his expression deadpan. Izuku had put Bakugo in an almost perfect genjutsu, one which almost completely put the target in another world. Of course, it's no Tsukuyomi, but it's similar to the one Sakura experienced by Kakashi. In this genjutsu, Bakugo had lost a battle and was completely stunned. Izuku would run up to join Ochako, and the two would easily deal with Ida. Izuku would put Ida under a more subtle genjutsu, where he thought the bomb was in a different corner. In the end, Izuku would sneak around Ida, who was busy with Ochako, and touch the bomb, effectively winning the fight. Izuku then released his genjutsu on Bakugo, who proceeded to yell out in anger once more. However, Izuku wasn't happy at all. If they were fighting to kill, Bakugo would have killed him ten times over. The bruises and scratches on him proved that. Izuku would never be able to beat his father at this point. Izuku would walk away from the battlefield feeling disappointed in himself. He'd need someone to teach him how to be as bloodlusted as Bakugo. Someone who could get as close to killing without doing so. Someone who was possibly even a hero killer. But that's what we'll be leaving it for now fam. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I hope you have a good day or night wherever you are. That's it for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.